when we're thinking about someone who either booked a call with us or maybe even further, I saw we're about a, we're a good split of um, SDR, BDR function and AEs. Like that's the majority of people in the room here. So whether it's they've agreed to a call and they keep kicking the can or they don't show up and they reschedule or they said they're going to move forward and they're buying. And then all of a sudden they're not showing back up to the table. Let's talk about a few things that we're going to include in our email. I'll start off Meg with your list and then Tom will move to yours. I'll bring up a slide here. Pink. What do you got for us? Yeah. So always start with a question or a statement. Um, I actually prefer, I'll use either or, um, and it dep- it kind of depends on the scenario, but um, again, to, to last slide, skip the niceties, start with questions, start with something that demands attention. Um, one of the things that I use, and this really goes into number two, attention grabber. Um, this is the concept of, of using the I'm confused card. Um, I was just actually having a conversation this morning with a, with a, a, a person on my team who was having some trouble getting a, a customer to respond to them. And I, I gave them the pointer of using the I'm confused card. And what does that mean? So the the I'm confused is you're starting with I'm confused. You mentioned X and here we are at Y. What's going on? What's happened? What's changed, right? So that's a combo statement of um, an, an attention grabber. I'm confused. That's going to get somebody's attention. And then following it up with a question of what's happened, what's changed. The biggest piece of advice I can give anyone when you're doing this is if you're doing it in an email, just just be short and to the point and state the facts. There's no need, again, to like include copious amounts of information. Um, I, I would start with something that they're going to see really quick, and that's going to get them to pay attention to it. Uh, And usually that is a some form of a question like what happened? Um, I've also used the statement like, I fear you may have fallen off the face of the earth. Only half kidding. Hope everything's fine. But we agreed that X, but we agreed that you would get back to me by whatever date, like be specific with what it was that you they were supposed to do. So this is a big accountability thing. Uh, and then move on from there. Awesome. Let's look at Tom's and then we'll go back and chat about some questions. Yeah. So um, there's something that I want to say, if I can, Leslie, which is that I think, um, I actually think a lot of this can be handled up front yes. as an AE. So I'll, talk, I'll, I'll, I'll make a note to these six things really quickly. But if you're finding that you're an AE and this happens to you all the time, uh, it's probably not your prospects. It's probably you. And it's probably uh-huh. something that you're doing or not doing on your discovery calls, right? So you might not be asking some of the really more direct, challenging questions on that call, right? So you might be expecting in your head that they're going to follow up with you and they're going to get you those resources, but perhaps you didn't set next steps to get a call on the calendar. Perhaps you didn't pressure test with like a mutual action plan and the timelines, Perhaps you didn't ask about the buying process and who else needs to be involved and who else is impacted by what you're talking about, or does this need to go to procurement? Does this need security review? Does this need legal review, right? If all you're talking about is if you're building rapport for 15 minutes, asking some light questions and then saying, hey, I'll send you an email follow-up and we'll take it from there, um, you're going to get a really, really low response rate on that. So um, the best uh, thing that you can do, I think is more of a prevention than a cure, but mm-hmm. alas, if you're already here, here's your cure, uh, based on what I've seen. I want to personalize the email based on things that have already been said. So I don't want to say, Hey, Megan, uh, checking in, uh, no, we had a call last week. How does next Tuesday work for a call? I haven't heard from you, but I might want to say something like, Hey, Megan, you know, you shared on our last call, how important it was for you to onboard your new SDRs. Uh, in order to do that by the end of March, you noted that we had to get you know X part of the project done uh, before March first. We're really coming close on that deadline. Do you like? Can we find five minutes to chat later today or tomorrow? Right? Can I can I bring it to anything specifically that you know remind her or him of like that chain that that challenge that pain that timeline that they already expressed to you? 
And can I use that as part of this, right? I'm not creating urgency. I'm using the urgency they've already talked about. Um, so I've, I've kind of talked about that in, in points two or three or four. Um, and then I like to like push them away a little bit, right? The, the thing that I'm trying to get to is a yes or a no. So mm -hmm. if it's a no, that's cool. I'll be, uh, my feelings will be hurt for 30 seconds, but then I'll be glad that I'm not now wasting that time and mental energy and have to forecast with my boss this deal that'll never come in. So I'd say, hey, seems like this might might have fallen off on the priority list. Is that is that true? You know, if so, it's all good. You're not going to hurt my feelings, but I just don't want to keep following up unnecessarily with you, right? And I just want to give them an out. I want to give them an out through the sales cycle. And if they're really quick to take it, then cool. Probably wasn't a good fit. There probably wasn't pain or I didn't do a good enough job in the first place. Um, and then as number six says, as time goes on, I'll, I'll get really brief. I might just throw in an emoji or a, or a meme or something like that if I want to be playful or just like one word, question mark. Um, and then after that, I'm just going to give up on the deal.